This video is part of a series helping you to revise for your GCSE science exams. Today, we're looking at the common misconception that the first few units of each science can only appear in paper one, and that after paper one, you won't need to revise those key topics. Yesterday, I posted a question where I was comparing mitosis and meiosis. And one of the first comments on that video was to ask, is this a realistic question? Would we ever be asked this? Because surely mitosis is a paper one topic and meiosis is a paper two topic. And that's a really common understanding of the way that the exams work, but it's not strictly accurate. So let's look at why. It's now less than a month until GCSE Biology Paper 1, so you probably have quite a clear idea in your head of which topics you're expecting to see on which paper. So, for instance, for biology, you know that in Paper 1, you're expecting to see questions about cell biology and organisation and infection and bioenergetics, which is photosynthesis and respiration. And then in Paper 2, you're going to find homeostasis, genetics, evolution and ecology. But that isn't actually the whole story. And in order to see why, we need to look at the specification. If you haven't done so already, I would really strongly recommend that you download the specification for your exams and read through it yourself, rather than just having it filtered through a teacher or through a revision guide. The specification contains a lot of really useful information that a lot of students don't seem to realise is there. So every year we have complaints from students that they don't understand why they're being assessed on their mathematical skills, even though the specification gives a really clear list of exactly which math skills will be assessed. In the same way, at the start of each of the sections about the subject knowledge, so the biology content and the chemistry content and the physics content, there is a section about fundamental concepts. Basically, what AQA are saying is that if you don't understand cell structure or atomic structure or energy, there's no way that you can really understand the rest of biology or chemistry or physics. And they think that these concepts are so fundamental that they are going to talk about them in both papers. GCSE Biology has the longest list of these fundamental concepts which could come up in either paper. And also, unlike chemistry and physics, where it's all traditionally paper one topics, which could also come up in paper two, in biology we do have some stuff that we think of as paper two topics that could come up in paper one. So you need to know about the structure and function of cells, cell division, variation from fertilisation, photosynthesis and respiration, metabolism and recycling molecules. So basically looking at things like the carbon cycle. Likewise, in chemistry, they say that the concepts and principles from the first three topics are fundamental to understanding the rest of chemistry. So although you will have major large questions on these topics in paper one, you may be asked to apply the concepts in some questions in paper two. That tends to mean things like being asked to label the structure of an atom or being asked to do some simple quantitative calculations. So whereas you would expect things like large five or six mark predicted yield or titration questions to come up in paper one, you could still expect to have a question that asked you to calculate the relative formula mass in paper two. So it's a smaller question or part of a question. And then for physics, there are only two topics listed. And basically what the specification says is that understanding energy is just fundamental to everything. So they're not saying that they're going to put in large energy calculations, but they do talk about you needing to understand energy changes and those transfers due to heating and mechanical and electrical work. So what does this actually mean on a practical level for you and your revision? Well, if you're already well organised, then it probably makes very little difference at all. If you're sensible, then you're going to have started revising paper two topics well in advance of the paper one exams, because you know that once those exams start, there is not going to be sufficient time for you to thoroughly revise half of the GCSE course. So hopefully you're doing that already. It does mean that before your biology exam, you might want to have a quick look at that recycling material section, because that's the one thing that could come up slightly early if you want to think of it like that. And it probably means that after those paper one exams, you don't want to completely put away your notes about cell biology and atomic structure and energy, because you're going to want to do a little bit of top up revision of those just in case. 
But the main thing is about you not being surprised by the sitting of the exam and not feeling panicked if you see one of these things coming up in a paper two exam. So it's really about your own sense of confidence and feeling prepared. Thank you very much for watching and feel free to comment if you have any other questions about how the GCC science exams are going to pan out. If you did find this video useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCC science revision videos coming soon.